The new campaign's here, and with it comes early access Italian destroyers. I've been lucky enough to pick up the Tier 4 Mestralia. So I'm going to give you a quick rundown of how you can get access to these ships. You can play for them, you can pay for them, because Wargaming is always going to let you pay for stuff in this game we've got a run through of the ship itself we've got my own commander build and inspirations it's nothing special spoiler alert however what i have got for you at around 15 minutes into this video is an absolutely awesome gameplay video so stick around for that one or if you just want to watch the gameplay skip forward but between now and that replay there's a lot of information that I've taken the time to put together to help you out to understand how this all works, how you can get your hands on it, and basically how you can start to play the Italian destroyers. Stay tuned, sit tight, prick your ears back, and listen in. So there are a couple of ways that you can get the new early access Italian destroyers. The first one, which um, is pretty standard to every campaign if there's early access, is through the campaign missions. And I've done a quick tally. We'll go back to number one because I'm already through to 29 on week one. But as you progress through the campaign, without admirably backing, um, if my counting's right, you will be able to get eight early access crates. And with admirably backing, you will get an additional two. Now, obviously, those crates are going to be awarded incrementally as you go through the five weeks of the campaign. But there is another way to get early access crates, and that is in, I'm not even going to pronounce that at the top, Squadrones Fugenti, which is basically a calendar. The calendar has three missions that you need to complete each day, and for each day, you get a set of rewards. And within these rewards, there are a number of early access crates and at the end of each week you get an extra reward um, so we've got extra crates promotion orders extra crates universal commendation and an insignia but within the calendar you will get another 12 early access crates giving you a total of 22 throughout the next five weeks what i will also point out in the calendar is that the third week will give you a total of 700 doubloons now if you miss doing the missions on a particular day you can buy that mission back for 100 doubloons so as long as you do all the missions on week three you can afford to miss seven missions and kind of break even on the whole thing but the reward for getting the missions is this guy who is the new italian destroyer so if you do complete all 35 days of missions and pick up all the rewards you will also get the new italian destroyer commando carlo burger mini um, who i think i will nickname mini burger his base trait is per l'onor d'italia which i guess means for the honor of italy means that for every one percent of your hit points that are lost your incoming damage is reduced and also at the same time the only specialist skill i see on here is this one talented which increases torpedo damage per one percent hit points lost and also increases your torpedo damage while you're in a smoke screen 
So the best way I can think of this is this guy is an Italian cockroach. The more you try to stamp on him and kill him, the harder it's going to be to kill it. Because the more hit points he loses, the more damage he is going to allow you to do. Which is interesting. So do you allow yourself to get shot to pieces and lose 50% of your hit points so that you can then go on a bit of a mini rampage? I don't know. I'd love to see how this works um, along with other commanders and inspirations. I hear you. You're a whale. You've got a wallet. It's your money. You'll spend it how you want. And yes, Wargaming will always cater for those of us who are more affluent. I'm not one of those people, unfortunately. So if you don't want to play the game for five weeks and you haven't bought out the campaign already and gotten all of those early access crates and, and gotten lucky with them, you go into the store and there are two things you can do the first one is this random bundle italy and what i will say that this is is basically a one-armed bandit where it shows you what you're going to win before you put your money in so if we um just take a look at this it comprises of 40 sets of three items and i'll see if i can click the right button here so here we go i did buy one set just to uh, see how this functioned it was 750 doubloons that i'd rather not have spent to be honest um, i already have the leonin here but here you have the tier four five six and seven italian destroyers which are currently early access each of those comes with a mission which um, you can get some doubloons on. I don't know exactly how much the missions are or if it will show us. Now, there we go, three tasks. I think the next one will be, well, the three, five, five, and how much is the last one? Five tasks. So the tier four has three tasks. I think it was 50 doubloons each on those. So there are some doubloons to be gotten through those but there are 40 sets at 750 doubloons each and basically each time that um, you take a roll of the dice here so each time you buy one 750 doubloons i will get two promotion orders i'll get um eight global xp boosters and i'll get four camos so as soon as i hit that button i will get those items and another set will load now all of the sets have an equal chance of dropping so it's probably more fair than some of the other um gambling mechanics that wargaming have in this game however you can save yourself a little bit of money, even if you do want to completely whale it. Let's see if I can get the buttons right again. No, wrong button. There we go. You can go in, and as I said, I've already bought one set. You can buy every single set for 30,000 doubloons. So you can drop 30,000 doubloons. You will get all four early access italian destroyers if you haven't already got it you will pick up the leon you will get the four missions for each ship which will give you some doubloons you'll get two insignias three universal accommodations 108 promotion orders a crap ton of camos and then a load of boosters so it's a it's basically a way of selling you immediate access to all of the early access and then a few things on top only spend the money if you've got it guys that's all i'll say for now so commander wise i'm using luigi rizzo i have seen a number of discussions going on in various um, social media channels about which commander might be best to use um, so I'm running him with Bay, who is at 16.4, and Mordoff, who I think is at 16.3. Um, so I've got reduced reload, but I've also got um, 
like better concealment or reduced detectability both the same thing just a different way of saying it and i'm running pretty much a bog standard build because i didn't want to try doing anything fancy or special to start with i wanted to get a feel for the ship and the commander before i started playing around with it um, so we've got um, observant rage we then run and look at me now now obviously if you want to go mad for guns you could do that but you'll be even more detectable than you already are um, twist and track I know a lot of people don't do that if you want to go full torpedo board you can go for that and do your, your reload smoke on the water which is slightly increasing the length of those smoke screens and then unstoppable just so if you do get hit in the engine you're gonna have a little bit of movement i've already got rizzo at 15 2 ideally i'd like to have my commanders at around 15 or 16 3 um, but i haven't invested heavily in italian destroyer commanders because the only italian destroyer commander i've had or only italian destroyer i've had is the paolo emilio and uh, so i didn't invest too heavily in getting this guy up here specs wise looking at this tier 4 destroyer um, i've had a quick comparison against some of the other tier 4 tech tree and premium destroyers that i have um, Torpedo wise, you've got 56 knot torpedoes. The damage is exceptionally low. We'll get to that in a second. Um, but the two, or rather the, yeah, the two tricks that we've got with these new Italian destroyers are here. We have got a rolling smoke screen. 26 seconds, we have three of them. We also have three engine boosts, but the thing that concerns me here is they are of extremely limited duration is 16 second engine boost to go with your 26 second smoke screen so if you are going to hit your smoke and you are going to hit your engine boost to run in and do a yolo on a target you had better make sure that you kill it because by the time you hit it, your engine boost is going to run out. Yes, you're going to have your smoke available, but if you haven't killed it, he's going to have all the time in the world to get back at you once that smoke screen runs out. Specs wise, just under 13 and a half thousand hit points. Um, it is one of the highest at tier four from what i've got available um, in my ship list and i have pretty much all of in fact no i do have all of the tech tree and uh, a few premiums as well um, artillery wise you've got two double hundred and twenties they're not crazy but the thing that is crazy about them if you look at the bottom of the right hand list is that you do have sap shells instead of armor piercing you have semi armor piercing and i will show you how well those work later uh, torpedo wise eight kilometers quite a good range 56 knots they are the slowest i think a t4 I think um, the next slowest is the Farragut with 58 knots. Um, and I think the only other destroyer with 56 knot torpedoes is the Hill. And they're only 5Ks. Um, so you really do have to get close to use those. But 8 kilometers, it's quite a decent range. Um, they are detectable at 1.1 kilometers. AA defense, forget about it. You don't want to be near a carrier. And given that it's a tier 4 ship, this one, you could possibly get... Um, a tier 3 carrier you could possibly get a tier 5 carrier god forbid you bump it into arc royal in this thing because you are going to get turned into um i don't know mashed ravioli <laughs> you would look like a plate of spaghetti that's been thrown in front of a moving express train yeah that's um, what will happen if you bump into an arc royal in this it is quite nimble, 38 knots, um, 590 meter turn and circle radius rudder shift to 2.7. And concealment wise, this is where they fall down a little bit. And this is where the Italians are going to differ in their gameplay. You can see that I was running bay, or I'll show you that I'm running bay and moored off on mine to bring my reload down on the guns, but also to give me some stealth. Um, 
I could probably bring that down a little bit lower to probably around five, 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 four. Um, but you're still you're not going to be as stealthy as some other boats at this tier. But where you can use your rolling smoke, that is the savior for these guys. It wouldn't be fair not to give you a replay after having you sit through and listen to all of that gumph about this. But I'm trying to be informative in this video and how better to be informative with a little bit of show and tell. We're here on Trap with Domination. I think this is a new map mode because it's the Trap but it's slightly smaller. And I can't remember having played it before today and I was a little bit out of sorts. Um, because I was hoping for a map that I was familiar with, um, something that I was um, comfortable playing destroyers on. So this was like a first outing in a new ship for me. And it was also, as far as I can remember, my first time out on this map. So it was kind of a double challenge. You'll see that I have got sap shells loaded. I'm just going to clean my glasses because they're absolutely filthy. And I'm trying to look at the screen and uh, do this talk through for you. I've also got a cup of tea handy because, you know, I always have a cup of tea handy when I'm doing a talk through. But it's a tier three, tier four match, and um, it is going to turn into a big one. Now, I'm playing out on the flank because having that sort of um, not the greatest concealment in the world, I don't want to get bumped too soon. There are a lot of little islands around here. And although we've only got two destroyers, there are three cruisers. And I don't really want to get in the way of a cruiser early game and lose a lot of hit points because that changes the whole way you're going to play the game. Now, we are running um, Twist and Track here. So we can see, obviously, from the fact that um, C-Cap is turning red and is contested, that there is a destroyer out there. I see a Kuma, and I'm like, oh, dear, Japanese cruiser, torpedoes. I'm thinking, does the Kuma have smoke, or is it only the Wacky? But we are going to find out. Didn't want to bump into a cruiser, but bumping into a cruiser early game is exactly what we are going to get. And you'll see, as the distance closes down, I turn into him and I am going to run straight at him. Now, I have no doubts that that guy is going to get torpedoes out. So we get some sap shells off. We miss him. RNG is a pain in the butt. He is getting twonked from elsewhere. Now we're going to hit that smoke. We are going to disappear. He takes some hits. We get guns off. Ba bump. No, we miss again from what less than two kilometers. And we are detected now. We're just lucky his guns are pointing the other way. So that is one thing you've got to watch out for a that the target is being spotted by someone else and b when you do get within two kilometers you're going to be automatically detected anyway so that is the kuma off the map that's one less worry the other cruiser has gone we're on destroyers and there i call this one the sobriety he is hiding behind the island contesting this cap I momentarily consider going round that way, but then I see the cruiser pushing and I'm like, okay, the cruiser could go round. There's a destroyer going round the other way. I'm thinking they've got that guy sandwiched. They can push round and trolley him. But no, the cruiser goes round and the destroyer slams on the brakes. I don't know why. That would have been a beautiful set piece move. Both sides of the island, straight round, bang, bang. That's a destroyer off the map instead what happens is we lose a cruiser he gets his torpedoes off but the destroyer survives so now i'm next in the queue really aren't i the destroyer looks like he's backed off the cap um i really wish that this other dd had pushed round because 
there are only two destroyers in the game and we're both here on this cap so we can't sit idle we need to go into action we've just lost the derflinger so we are down on points now even if we take this cap it's going to take us a little bit of time to claw those back it's time for YOLO and really I do think that these destroyers are built for YOLO attacks. The um, maximum damage per torpedo is only 8600. It is pretty much the lowest at the tier. If you're going to run in on something with torpedoes you better make sure that you're going to kill it. But there is the DD. We use those sap shells and as you can see we're taking chunks off him. We're going to damage control that, we run the smoke, because that battleship is out in front of us. We are currently spotted, but as soon as that guy is dead, I said as soon as that guy is dead, kill him. There we go, kill number two. That battleship can no longer see us. Now I could push through to the rear here and start chasing these battleships down. We've got... 8Ks on those torpedoes, so it is quite a good range on them. However, um, they are slow, as I said, at 56 knots. So you're not really going to be catching up with anything with any great speed with those torpedoes, especially if you're torpedoing from behind. And they if they're going away from you at 26 knots, or let's say 23 knots, something like that, they're, they're really going to be taken forever to catch up with them. There doesn't seem to be a high flood chance on these from what I found. Maybe it's just the ships that I was hitting. Um, but I do land quite a few torpedoes in this. And I do eventually get some floods. But it's going to take a few hits to get those. We've swung around. We've come back into the cap. We've got a Kaiser there, and I'm saying to him, you know, whoop, get back. You don't want to sail straight around that corner. There's at least four battleships out there. And thinking what we need to do is potentially push over, get this other red team destroyer found, and get them off the map. Now, if you look towards the bottom left-hand corner of the minimap, you'll see we've got two ships have gone the long way around the island. We did lose the destroyer that was across there. Um or the destroyer that was on this side so it's going to be down to me i think he went out of a battleship so i'd love to know how he got himself detected you know he, he must have a fairly low level commander because he should have been more than far enough away to um, have remained undetected and he had a smoke screen there as well so i don't know what happened there but we are going to get ourselves back into the fight because it would not be a gameplay video without playing the game. So we're looking around. We've got torpedoes available. And I'm thinking, you know, if you guys can take care of that cruiser, then we can have a field day with the battleships and start smacking things around and bring this one home for blue team, even though it's actually four ships plays six. Oh dear, we're losing still. Um, what are we going to do? We're going to put torpedoes out on that battleship. And um, even though I thought he was going at, at full chat, so at full speed, I said, those things take take forever. We're going to turn out and away because we don't want to risk one of those guys turning into us and being um, a little bit stuck and i'm telling everybody shoot that destroyer you know he's out of range for me get on the destroyer kill the destroyer make the game easier for us and they're like no negative we're not going to do that and uh, that destroyer is going to die but in dying he's also going to kill another one of our ships and i'm thinking jesus what is going on here there we go we get another three torpedo hits we get one flood and red team are starting to push back in 
and I'm in a place that I don't really want to be with all these little islands because it's difficult to maneuver you want to be agile you want to be able to avoid fire and at the moment I'm baiting these guys into shooting at me that's what I want them to do I hit the smoke he hits the sonar we're still on sap and we're going to keep firing at this guy and hope to hell that we can kill him as you can see these sap shells take chunks off we blind fire we don't get a kill we turn we get the torpedoes out towards the koenig narrow and widespread i don't know where that cruiser went to but i'm running onto this cap find some cover and then i am going to pull a 180 because i'm absolutely crapping my pants here they know where i am we are down to three ships against five and they're all pretty big ships and they're all pretty much full health there's the koenig we get another two torpedo hits there again takes a third hit to get a flood and that seems to be um the margin of floods to torpedoes is a is a three torps to one flood ratio but is that ticking no he's damage controlled it we've still got the issue there as well who's full health and i just don't know what our battleships were shooting at they didn't even go the noob method of spamming he and getting some fires on these things it would have made my life a hell of a lot easier there's the cars i'm going to pop a shot i've got to because otherwise he is going to muller me bang kill number three and now we need to drop detection that guy's backing out this guy's coming forwards please shoot at him there's only one battleship left um i realized that pretty much the rest of the team is dead the only guy that's left is the guy that was all the way across there on b cap at the start with me and it's four versus two i don't know what he actually has done so far in this game i wasn't paying attention because there was far too much going on over on this side of the map now i've got to wait for my engine to be repaired so luckily i've still got some movement we get another three torpedo hits and two floods and look this time it's ticking it's sticking and ticking that should have a t-shirt that says that shouldn't i and there he is but it is ticking ever so slowly and i'm gonna kill that guy kill that guy get him off the map i can go after the other one you know but i think you know what the hell if you're not in a position to shoot at him because you're stuck behind a friggin island all the way on the other side of the map then i'm going to try and add a fire to those floods oh no he's damage conned I really do need a fire now and I need to make sure that that Ishi is not going to come after me because I've only got a third of my hit points left. Oh dear, there we go. He tries to get the kill. He doesn't do it. We slow down. We're going HE this time. We're going to try and get a fire. The question is, can we get a fire? It's quite a low fire chance, I think. I think it's 8%. Come on, keep going, Tony. Keep going. Get those shots on. Up, oh, full salvo. Coming in my way. He's only got armor Peterson loaded. And he misses. RNG saves my butt. And then it gives me a fire. And so I decide that in a second, after I try to get a second fire on him, I'm going to switch to sap shells again and see if I can chip away that superstructure to give me kill number four. And here we go. The shells are going in. We're chipping away. But guess what? Matey boy here. Full salvo. Yeah, full salvo. How many hit points was that worth? I don't know. I did say to him after the game, hey, look, you know, situation like this, please shoot the full health battleship because the other guy you know is burning down and flooding his health bars disappearing shoot the full health one because it makes him easier to kill after we've dealt with the other guy and he just gave me a thumbs up emoji 96 and a half thousand damage this is a tier 3 tier 4 game and you can probably tell by my voice doing the talk through that this was pretty intense you know my screen is flipping all over the place as i'm trying to look at where i can move where i can position what i can target i'm out of smokes now i'm out of engine boosts and i said those engine boosts 16 seconds in duration they're not worth anything to be honest 
we get another set of torpedoes out and i think i can't afford to let these guys hang on there's another ship across there that's the ganget that was in the middle he's gone all the way around how did i not know that he was out there i completely forgot about it he's chased that other guy around the map three battleships are going to focus him and kill him what am i going to do there's less than a minute on the clock we get another two torpedoes another flood we get two cap resets we're only 100 points up the second set of torpedoes is missed i'm thinking can i can i sneak in here along the beach we're five six we're gonna to have to start moving the 17 seconds i'm spotted i need to move can we get some shots on him and then i'm thinking it's not him he's off the cap it's the other guy that i need to get some shots on but he's still not round the corner what do i do what do i do the issue is turning for me i'm trying to turn in here i know i'm going to take a shot we blind fire across at the koenig expecting him to come around the corner and he does we get a triple cap reset we stay on him there's seconds to spare i'm just trying to draw fire from that battleship so he stays alive and we don't lose the points and the game ticks down with 113,314 damage three kills 13 torpedo hits there 61 main guns two fires five floods six cap resets one assist in cap we pick up a high caliber and the first blood 2161 base xp i have had higher in this one but there we are we are what 1100 base xp over second place that game was mental so final thoughts on the ships do i like them um yes in that they are different they're going to bring in a different style of play it remains to be seen how i find them at the higher tiers and how they compare with other ships at those tiers because unfortunately within the game now there are two things that can absolutely ruin the chances for these italian destroyers and they are sonar and radar in fact there's a third thing as well which is 11 or 12 kilometer secondaries because if you get picked up while you're running down something in your smoke there's a good chance you're going to get deleted i think it's going to add something new a new dynamic to the game it's going to be fun to learn to play them um it's going to take a while to get commanders and and inspirations up to speed to use them effectively but i do think um it's a nice addition to the game it's got to be a bit of a grind again but keep your eyes peeled on the channel don't forget smash the like button leave me a comment tell me if you've got access to any of these ships if you've been playing them how you find them don't forget tell your friends to get across the channel hit that subscribe button because we're already one third of the way towards 900 we can hit this thousand we can do it take care of yourselves guys if you see me out there and i'm on the red team please don't shoot at me it really ruins my day if i'm on the blue team with you please do support me because i love you always until next time take care and goodbye